Welcome to the next segment. This is Eagle Faith Online, Bishop Ed Wood. We thank God for this divine cleansing. And I appreciate all listeners. Please, when we receive this message, also share. Share it viral. In John chapter 4, verse 4, uh, let me start from verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, But actually, the Bible says in verse 2, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again into, some, into Galilee. Verse 4 says, and he must needs go through Samaria. Because as I said, <coughs> Samaria occupied the center of Palestine. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. <coughs> now Jacob's well was there. Jacob's well was there. In Sica, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, on the well, on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. And there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. Give me some water to drink. God was going to prove a point there. Give me some water to drink. Jesus himself being holy and knew about holy things would have not asked this girl, give me water to drink. But he was proving a point. He was proving a point of salvation to affect the entire generation of Samaria. At that time, in verse 8, the Bible said his disciples were going to look for food in town. Then this woman started exchanging words with Jesus Christ. She cherished the world so much. But let me tell you something. Even the well that was filled with water had long before being this, this, this infected. There is parojara around the whole place. But they trusted in, in the well so much that when you <clears throat> listen to the conversation between Jesus and the woman, <clears throat> In verse 9 says that then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, tribalistic, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? That does mean that the Jewish people had no issue with, 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 with the Samarians, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. A heavy tribalistic ground. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living waters. Living waters. Living waters. Beloved, Samaria was not regarded as part of the Holy Land. Samaria 
was not regarded as part of the Holy Land, but it was in the center of Palestine. Why was it not regarded as the center of holiness? Because the things that happens there, beloved. And this is the part of land that Jacob's well had been there. But it was not counted as a land of holy ground. A place Jacob had given to Joseph, Saika, Saika, and Jesus had to face this woman to challenge her to the extent that this woman would understand that salvation is in Jesus. That salvation is in Jesus. But between the conversation between the two of them, God was speaking to the entire world. God was speaking to the entire world that the well was not the most important thing. Because if you consider the well that the people of Samaria cherished so much, you realize that the well had been so long that it has to be disinfected. But tradition of men is so stag stagnant that they will continue to follow the old decayed problems without solving them. If you take your time to read, you will know that the woman was not only the target, but the target was Samaria. So God was speaking to the entire world, the whole world. In the book of John, the message was about the move of the spirit. When Nicodemus had to come to Jesus and said, Master, we know that what you are doing, if you don't have the spirit of God, you can do that. And God said, until you repent until you repent until you repent there is the need for repentance before the move of the spirit can can move look you can wash your your hands through running water but at the end of the day you have to sanitize your heart consecrate yourself that the washing of your hands will have a meaning else you will still go back to the pig style i entreat you that god is always speaking to us god is always speaking to us god is always speaking to us the chapter four was about the foundational belief and understanding of the believer to understand that salvation is in the Lord. So what was the assignment, was the divine assignment of Jesus on earth from heaven? God was looking for somebody to open the scroll so God had to even use Jesus to stand in the gap for us. Who can open the scroll? There is nobody that was found to open the scroll. He found none. But Jesus stood willfully and said, irrespective of my glorious state here in heaven, I will go down to stand in the gap and to die pay a price and he took up the charge beloved Nicodemus was also a king he was a chief or a ruler consider the title and his personality the fisherman Peter he was though a fisherman but theologically he could predict when to go to sea and catch a fish. 
He was hardworking and able to determine when the fishes are moving, in which direction he can track them. Paul was also a tent maker. Paul was a scholar. But he was still making tents. Nicodemus was also a Jewish leader. Look at the personality. Jesus, Joseph of Arimathea, all of them were people of, of honor. And God still called them to stand in the gap. And today, I want to thank all those that are listening that God has chosen somebody to stand in the gap. And after the COVID, we will revive the meetings again. So those that are hearing, please don't underestimate these meetings because we understand by revelation that there is coming another powerful, powerful plague which will be even stronger than this one. Let's wish it will not be true. But we have to prepare, we have to set our house in order that when it comes, we might have been prepared to face it and face it as the children of God. God bless you. This is Eagle Faith, Bishop Edward.